my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lion. Save me from the horn of the ox. I will declare you, or I will declare your name to all the people, Lord. In the assembly, we shall praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him right now. All the descendants of Jacob, honor the Lord. Revere him, all the descendants of Israel. For he has not despised nor scorned us. The suffering and the afflictions of ones, he has not hidden his face. Lord have mercy from us. But he has listened to his to the cries of his people for help. You have come, or you have come to the theme or them that assemble in the great assembly. Therefore, those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. Here's the 
promise that we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole. I think of whatever gods there may be for my uncomfortable soul. In the fell clinch of circumstance, I have not rinsed nor cried aloud. Under the blunges of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place looms the horrors of the shade. But yet the menace of the year shall find, find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate or how charged the punishment of the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And God's people said amen. Come on, let's give God some praise here. Come on. When you live right, you can die right. Let's give God some praise right here. This is a celebration. When you live for the Lord, we celebrate from the body is to be present with the Lord and to hear the words well done thou good and faithful y'all need to celebrate celebrate let me say it again to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord let's celebrate weeping only endure for a night. But my joy is in the morning. Somebody ought to shout in the morning. In the morning. Yeah. I had to get my own. I had to get my own raw relevance and reality. Because sometimes we moan at the wrong time. But when you live right, and when you talk right, and you act right, can I be isogenical? There's a chariot waiting to swing down. So let us celebrate in the, in the season of our ancestors. Let us bring our roots back from Africa. That death was not a time of sorrow, but it was a time of celebration. That the, what the Africans would call the Muscufi, the circle of life, it never breaks. Because those who go to the hereafter leave descendants and generations in front of us. So let us celebrate. Let us celebrate. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. To this beloved family and to all those who are gathered here, we come on this pleasant afternoon to celebrate the life and the legacy of Sister Sullivan, amen? amen? Who I enjoyed the time. I don't know how she made me related or kin to her, but she will always call me her cousin. And I just kept that, all right? All right. All right. To this loving family, understand that God understands what you're going through. He's even in the midst of this. And we say that God is good all the time, even in death, he's good. So we are reminded that. I will not hold you long, but this family has properly prepared the order of worship. And I will not insult your intelligence by getting up and down and reminding you of what you and this family has asked you to do. So we've had the procession on the final viewing. Now we will have a selection from, from Christ's radical. Then we will have scripture reading, Old Testament, Reverend Jackie. 
McNeil New Testament from Reverend Robert Chapman. Prayer by Reverend Charles K. Gray. We'll have a selection from Larry McCullen and the Chosen Generation. Then we will go into remarks. We'll have Miss Sue Barry Helms uh, from the class of 61, Miss Beth B. Chapman, family and friends, Mr. Richard Yurgan, brother and family. Then we will come back with another selection by uh, Brother Larry McCullough and the Chosen Generation. Then we will have acknowledgments uh, from Dr. Keisha Hill Mills. A selection from uh, Christ Radical, Words of Comfort from Bishop T. Angelo Hill. Then I will come back after this has been fulfilled with the closing prayer and we will have communal and benediction. So in this order, let us not be dismayed. Whatever betides us, God will take care of us. Beneath his wings, his love abides. God will take care of us. As you see your name, let us come and do it in Holy Ghost fashion. Amen. Oh, 
Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far beyond above limits. The heart of her husband do a safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She would do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and, and a portion to her maiden. She considered the field and by it. With the fruit of her hand, she planted a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. For her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in a time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She knoweth well to the ways of her household, and it is not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou exceedest them all. God's word for God's people and my family at such a time as this. Christ 
shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. God's words to God's people. And may the word of God be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. If Jenny could come back here, she wouldn't come. But she's in a better place. Father, it is at this watch of the day, under your unction and your guidance that we've gathered in this place, for the sole purpose of celebrating the life of one that you called from labor to rule. And the reality is, God, that her husband, her children, her grandchildren, if they could have held her here, I'm sure they would have. But the reality is the appointment that she had with you superseded staying here on this side. You encouraged us and informed us in your word that man that is born of a woman is of a few days. Those days are full of trouble. You let us know that life is just a vapor. You let us know that when our time here is finished that you're coming back for us. And there's nothing we can do about it. And so, Father, we take comfort today in your word where it said that to be absent from the body is to be present with you. God, she doesn't have to suffer anymore. She doesn't have to be in pain anymore. She doesn't have to go to the doctor anymore. Family don't have to look in on her anymore. Because the reality is her sickness has now been healed. Her pain is no more. But the reality is, God, that even though she's resting in you, there's an absent chair at the table. There's a voice that we won't hear anymore. And so we pray, Father, today that you would honor your word where you said that you would comfort those who mourn. We thank you for the contributions that you allowed her to make on this side. But now, God, we pray that you will shelter us and cover us with the memories of what has happened. Thank you for the years that you allowed her to share with her husband and her children, her grandchildren. But, oh God, wrap them now in your comfort. Wrap them now in, now in your love. Wrap them now in your arms and let them know that you still hold true to your promises that you would never leave them nor forsake them. So we love you, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you for what you've done, for what you're doing, and we give you praise for what you're going to do. We celebrate the life of your daughter, Miss Jenny Sullivan. In Jesus' name we pray.
be standing by. Amen.
Jenny deserved it. She deserved it. I would like to give all honor, glory, and praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for just letting me be here among you and thank you for you. I want to thank the pastor of this great church for allowing me to stand in his pulpit today. And also, I would like to thank the Sullivan family for asking the Bryson High School class of 1961 to have a few remarks over our Jenny B. We called her Jenny B. And somehow I was selected uh, to do those remarks. And you know, sometimes you have to think who you're going to talk over, but I didn't have to think about what I'm say about Jenny B, a little skeptical about it. We walked those halls of Bryson. We went to the cafeteria together. We ate together. We had class meetings together. And during all of that time togetherness, I never heard Jenny B grumble or complain or say anything nasty. She had learned to keep her emotions intact and that was one thing about her and when I was trying to think of something to say it wasn't hard and I was so positive in my thinking I said let me call some of my other classmates and just see what they have to say about Jen B. Uh, I made many calls uh, no answers you know a lot of people don't answer phones now so the people that I did get I got our alumni class president, Sister Bobby Austin. I said, Bobby, I'm getting something together to say about Jenny B right here. I said, sum up two words what you would say about Jenny B. Bobby said, quiet and very friendly. I made a call to Sister Bobby Irby. I said, Bobby, uh, give me some thoughts about uh, Jenny B. She said, just nice. That was good. So I went on down. To, I called Reverend Clara Geary. I said, Clara, can, can you tell me something about Jenny B in just a few words? She said, mild-mannered and quiet. So I called Sister Margaret Griffin. I said, Margaret, I'm getting something together about Jenny B. What would you say about Jenny B in just a couple of words? quiet and nice. And so these are our thoughts about Genevieve, uh, this class. And at this time, I would just like for Bryson High School class of 1961 to stand. If you don't feel like standing, just raise your hand. But uh, I feel we have very good representation. <laughs> Thank you, class. And I ran our class, we reorganized about 10 years ago, and we met at one of the uh, cafeterias here in Simpsonville. And uh, Jenny happened to be at one of those meetings. And we talked, I talked with her and everything, and I, I remember leaving that meeting with the thought, well, I have a doubt, Jenny B is the same, excuse my expression, but she is the same nice, well-mannered person as she was in school. And I would like to leave here today and I'd like to say to the family, I want you to find hope in knowing and comfort that Jenny B is in a better place. No more sickness, no more pain, because today Jenny is in the eyes of God. She's in God's hand. And I'm sure that's where we all would like to be one day. And I would like to say to the family that the class pray that God will continue to bless you during this time of bereavement. Amen. Amen. Thank you. My name is Beth Barbary Chaffin. 
My dad was Jerry Barbary, and his brothers, Bob and David, owned the service station here in Simpsonville, where Willie went to work when he was 15 years old. Last week, when Caroline and the family asked me to say a few words, I was not only humble, but honored to do so. Willie and I have always jokingly called each other brother and sister through the years, but make no joke about it, we have always been family. Ever since my husband Billy passed away, Willie and Jenny stepped in and always came to my rescue. When the wheel came off my lawnmower and I ran it up the tree, and when I almost cut my finger off on the lawnmower blade, and I could go on, with, on and on with stories like this, couldn't I, Willie? But Jenny and Willie always came. Just like Jenny always came to my rescue, she was always there for anyone who needed her. Not only did she take care of her own family, she took care of anyone in the community that needed her help. She not only was Willie's wife, she was a daughter, a mother, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, a sister, an aunt, and at last but not least, a friend to us all. Jenny was God's servant. Almost everyone who knew her had good stories to tell of how she stepped in to help in different circumstances. She often sat with people who were recovering from different illnesses. She truly cared for people no matter who they were or what their need was, preparing meals, making sure clothes were clean, or just someone to sit and listen and keep them company. She reminds me of the parable Jesus told in Matthew 25 about the talents. It tells how God's servants were given different talents and the master returns to see how they all use them. Of the ones who use their talents wisely, Jesus said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Jeannie has now entered into the joy of the Lord. She has seen her Lord face to face. She demonstrated what it was like to truly have a servant's heart. May we all learn from her. This is the legacy that she leaves to each of us. I would like to close with a poem that makes me think of Jeannie. It is entitled, She Is Not Gone. Ease your grief, she is not gone, for in your heart she lingers on. Her smile, her laugh, her special way will comfort you from day to day. You'll find her presence in the breeze that dances gently in the trees, and it's her face that you will see when you're in need of company. At any time, you can recall the love you shared, you saved it all. And in time, more than anything, you'll find peace in remembering. Thank you. Richard Jurgen. I'm uh, Genevieve's uh, youngest brother. Um, it was five of us. I'm the youngest, she's the oldest, and my middle brother's in the audience. And uh, my, my dad's uh, brother is also with me. And uh, so we wanted to make sure that we came by to let you know that uh, everything is all right. Uh, Genevieve was very quiet. Well, a uh, humble person, uh, very loving. She looked at me as though, as when well, she called me a little brother, and she treated me like one. Mm -hmm. Even though uh, I'm much bigger, everybody in the whole household probably, except the son. <laughs> but uh, she really made me feel like a little brother, and I, I appreciated that. Uh, I never had a sister, but when I found her, she was all that I could ever hope to have had. The way that she uh, left here was remarkable. The fact that she was able to leave on her own terms, so to speak. I know nobody knows the hour nor the day when you're gonna leave here, but she came pretty close. And uh, when I came to visit her, uh, I couldn't tell anything was wrong with her. She talked and did everything as though life was going on as normal. 
And um, I, I looked there and just shook my head, like, really? But uh, in reality, it, it all came out, and uh, this is where we're at now. But uh, she's a good person. I love her dearly. I have him up here with him so that he can say some things. Well, well, well. We will meet again on the other side. Called the eternal life, right? Let me offer you this. And this is to the family. Jeremiah 31, 25 states, I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. Now, in order to be a refreshment, we have to receive some sort of refreshing while we're here, right? So we give her her flowers now, not at the hour of her death. And so I have a very clear memory of the last time that I had a chance to say goodbye to my aunt after you know, spending countless amount of days sitting with her. Um, Understanding the word presence and being in the here and not the there or the later, it's being in the present. And so as we come to a close in this presence, being in her presence, knowing that she's gone on to be with the Lord, it's a prayer that I meditated on yesterday that I want to share with the family. Father God, for when we come before you in the living now, we know when we're weak, you are strong. When we are lonely, you are our comforter. When we are unable to continue to move forward, you are our strength. Father God, we need you in order to persevere. Please remind us that when we feel overwhelmed, that you are right there with us holding our hand. Father God, refresh our soul as you give my auntie rest. In Jesus' name, amen. There has been many cards, notes, flowers, messages, and words of comfort that has been said that the family will acknowledge at a later time. Mr. Willie Sullivan and the family would like to extend a thank you to all for the outpouring of support that they have received during this difficult time. Whether you called on the phone, brought food, drinks, visited, or simply prayed a prayer of strength, the family thanks you for whatever part you played, the Sullivan family.
Oh God, we come before you now. We pray for preaching power. We ask God that you would think with our minds and speak with our mouths. Use us until you're satisfied and until you're glorified. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Minister unto this family and friends and meet them at this place in their life. Oh God, and give them the courage, the healing, and the wholeness they so easily and eagerly stand in need of to move forward. Now, Father, give us power that makes preaching relative, real, easy, and effective. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, who is our strength and redeemer? And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Can we give God one more hand clap of praise on today? <laughs> Certainly to this family and to uh, Pastor Freeman and the staff of this great church and the fellow ministers and all of you, our father's children, it is so good to see each and every one of you on today as we celebrate the life of our dear mother, uh, Sister Sullivan. In the 23rd Psalm, for those of you who have your Bible, you can turn there, but I've heard the remarks about Miss Jeannie being nice, mild-mannered, being a good friend, but I had somewhat of a different story. i never forget one Sunday after church, uh, she walked up to me just as nice and pleasant. And she said something that I can't and dare not repeat in this sanctuary today. <laughs> now y'all know the nice Jeannie Sullivan. I know something different. Meet me at the church, I'll tell you what she said. <laughs> Psalm number 23, verse number 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I want to use for a subject for a few moments today. It comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. Ladies and gentlemen, not only is it possible, but it is also factual that you can be in God's will and in God's word and find yourself going through one of the most horrific experiences of life that you've ever encountered. It is possible and it is factual that you can be in God's way, you can be in complete obedience to God's word and still discover that you are having to suffer loss, disappointment, discouragement, and even uh, dealing with a great degree of hurt that you never imagined. On the flip side, ladies and gentlemen, when we understand this whole concept of relationship with God, some people have it misconstrued and have a misunderstanding about what walking with God is really all about. But there are those, ladies and gentlemen, who believe that their relationship with God restricts them from even encountering negativity and the sufferings that life has to offer. But I want to push the envelope a little bit further here, Brother Sound Man, to help me. And let you know that even prayer will keep your mind at peace. And prayer will strengthen your spirit. But there are some things prayer won't prohibit you from encountering. I'm sure, family, many of you sat many days and uh, had prayer and asked God to heal mother, heal my grandmother, give her extended days of living. But what do you do when the prayer you prayed seemingly was not answered or heard? Uh, you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that sometimes it is just in God's divine will that we encounter what life has to offer. When we understand this then, my brothers and sisters, we have to continuously investigate the theology and the mind of God. For the Bible teaches us that there, are, there, there, is, no, that there is a boundary line no man can cross. And it teaches us that our days have been numbered. And the problem that many of us have is we become so consumed and engulfed with the good times that when the bad times 
times occur, we almost have a nervous breakdown because we prepare and prep ourselves to receive the good that God has to offer. But very rarely are we prepared to receive the bad that God has to offer. Um, we understand this then. We have to continuously read the Bible in Job chapter number 2 verse number 9 and 10. You remember Job's wife looks at Job and tells Job to curse God and die. Watch what Job's response is to his wife. He says, shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not also receive evil? I help the need to help you understand ladies and gentlemen that if we are going to shout over the goodness of God then we got to learn how to put ourselves in position to celebrate for the, the negative that God has to offer well Bishop I don't believe that way you don't believe your Bible because in Romans 8 28 it says and we know that all things work together for good of them that love God and who are the called according to his purpose ladies and gentlemen I have a problem with David and the 23rd Psalm if you would Permit me uh, to express publicly my internal frustration with David and this 23rd Psalm. I have a problem with the 23rd Psalm, ladies and gentlemen. I understand that it is some of you all's favorite chapter. It is some of you all's favorite number, rather, in the book of Psalm. But I have a problem, and here it is. David, I got a problem with you because you set us up for the okey-doke in the 23rd Psalm. In the 23rd Psalm, in verse number 1, you talk about how God being the good shepherd. In verse number 2 and verse number 3, you talk about how God uh, restores and leads and guides. In verse 5, you talk about how God ushers us into the house of God and goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And you talk about all the good, but in the middle of talking about the good, there is one verse that is not so good and that is we walking through the valley of the shadow of death now, now, some of you may be asking the question, well, if worship is not going to uh, uh, abort all of our issues, if prayer is not going to abort our issues, if walking with God is not going to abort our issues, then what need do we do uh, to worship? What need do we have to pray? What need do we have uh, to walk with God? But before you get consumed in arrogance, there are some benefits in verse number four. There are some benefits that David exposes unto us, Mr. Willie. The, the benefits that David exposes to us uh, that we can come to appreciate about walking with God and living in the will and the ways of God. Now let's unpack it. Verse number four here. Because there are some benefits that we need to acknowledge. N number one, ladies and gentlemen. N number one, the first thing that we see is the writer's account. In verse number four, that there's something that we need to understand about his account. Here it is in the A clause. Yea, though I walk through the valley, press pause. Uh, now I disagree uh, with one theologian about what he says in verse number four, A clause. He he seems to give the insinuation uh, that God is forever present. Uh, but when I look at what David says, David seems to give the illusion that while we know God is forever present spiritually in the natural sometimes it looks like God isn't always there in the 8th clause of verse number 1 David says uh, uh, well, watch this now he's not talking about God here in the 8th clause he's talking about himself he says yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death now for a fleeting moment me and David had a conversation and I had to ask David a question David are you suggesting that there may be a period in walking through this valley that you may have felt by yourself and if we be honest ladies and gentlemen and stop trying to be so spiritually astute and deep and be honest for a moment even though we love God and serve God spiritually sometimes in the natural it looks like God has abandoned us and when you sit here
here and you see this family crying and those of us who sit, sat in their same position uh, so sometimes in your greatest hurt you want to know where is God uh, because I hear what life has to say I hear what the situation has to say. But sometimes, God, it looks like that when I need you the most, now you've gone quiet. And sometimes David is teaching us, sometimes you got to trust God when you can't put your finger on God. When you don't know what God is doing and why God is doing it. Family, I understand. I can consider and see your pain and see your hurt. Because here it is. If God has all power, if God is really there, why not heal in life and not through the vehicle of death? Hmm. Any parents in the room today? Any parents in the room today? Come on, some of y'all acting like you're embarrassed about your kids. Any parents in the room today? <laughs> Lord help. You know as a parent, at least in the house I grew up in, in the house I run, there are some days where you don't get to question your parents. Because since I am the parent, you're going to do what I said do. Uh, because if you're going to live up under the auspices of this house, there are some rules in this house. What's the primary international rule? You're going to do what I say, do when I say, do it. And in the house I grew up in, I don't have to tell you why I did what I said, do. All you need to know is I said, do it and expect it to be done. I think I got some real parents in the room. Why is it we give our parents that much respect? But when it comes to the things of God, we want to get an attitude with God and feel as if God should have ran it by us before God done what God wanted to do, failing to acknowledge we are all under his control. So David says, for, for a moment, God, it, it, it looks like, it feels like I'm walking through this by myself. Pray to you about my wife, prayed to you about my grandmother, prayed to you about my mother and God you, you still inflict this pain on me and the Lord seems to suggest it comes with the territory because I'm just not the God who will lead you into green pastures I'm the God who will lead you in dark valleys and friends if you're going to praise about green pastures some point we got to learn how to thank him and praise him going through the valley. The Bible says in all things give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. David says, my account if is if I were allowed to be human, there were moments where I feel like God wasn't there. But then there's another side of this. David says there are moments while feeling like God wasn't there, I seen that what God was doing sometimes could not be attributed to anything but look at God. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, while we look at the negative and the bad of life, we got to learn how to point out what God did. Come on, talk to me, church. Family, when, when, you, when you look at the transition, when you look at everything that has occurred, you got to learn how to point out what God done. Uh, doctor said one thing, but look at what God done. Street committee said one thing, but look at what God done. Uh, the specialists gave their own uh, resolutions, but look at what God done. That's David's account. But secondly, we have David's association. And here is the shadow of the text. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because God is with me. Uh, here, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, as we look at verse number four in the 23rd Psalm. David says, watch this, negativity takes on a different perspective when I look at it through the perspective of God. 
He says, when I look at it in my own self and perspective, it doesn't look good. It looks ugly. It looks horrifying. It looks detrimental. But when I look at it through the perspective of God, I have to look at it and say, God, you're still worthy. God, you're still able. Uh, when, when, when we look at what David is talking about, here it is a man. His life was under scrutiny. His life was in jeopardy by his own king. His life was always under attack. And now, here it is. He's going through transition. He's going through a phase and seemingly giving a testimony about what God has done and who God has been to him. And in the process, he seems to suggest unto us before you become some imbalanced Christians and believers let me balance your life out and not just let you celebrate over the good but tell you that there is going to come some hurt while walking with God there's going to come some pain while walking with God but it takes on a different meaning when you understand that even though you can't see what God is up to you know that God is there David says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because God is with us. D, I hear you, my, my, my mother's gone. And what, what, what am I going to do? God is with us. Ms. Sullivan, I hear you, sir. Uh, my, my wife of 46 years is no longer here but God is with us now I've sat in this same seat you all have seated and I've almost gotten somewhat offended by people who get up here and think they are offering me words of consolation they say offensive things that sounds helpful God is too wise to make a mistake, too just to do wrong. Then I found out that God is so much God that if God wanted to make a mistake, he could, and it'd still be good. Amen. Say, God won't put no more on you than you can bear. But I kept reading the Bible. And Paul said, we were pressed beyond measure to the point to where we had the sting of death upon us. But you said God won't put more on me than I can bear. So I'm not gonna tell you all of those nice church cliches. I'm not gonna even sit here and tell you to trust God because I trust that God and my wife is still gone. Be honest with me today. I'm not going to tell you that. What I am going to tell you is in the midst of seasons like this, your joy comes in the fact that even though people may come and go, God will always be present. I wish I had some honest people in here who can really give God praise to say that I've lost some things, I've lost some people, but what has gotten me over through time and time again is learning how to lean and depend on God. Now I'm getting offended because I know the family is going through, but there are supposed to be some believers in this room today that can help encourage the family and be honest. Yes, you're going to cry. Yes, you're going to be frustrated. Yes, you're going to hurt, but the true testament is when you finish crying, you can look up heaven way and say, God, I need your help. This hurts. But when I know that God is present, God is there. Now, preacher. Mm. You talk about me feeling by myself. You talk about I learn how to depend on God when I don't know what God is up to. And you talk about that God is with us. Mm -hmm. Now here comes the benefit. We have David's account, we have David's association, but the third thing that we have, we have we have David's assistance found in the end of verse number four. 
thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. The rod and the staff, they comfort us. One, one theologian says that this rod and staff is the comfort, the word of God. Uh, how do we find comfort in that? Uh, he, he continues to write and says that in the, in, in the historic days of David, the, the, the shepherd used the rod and uh, the staff. The rod in was to drive away the enemy and the beast trying to attack the sheep. While, watch this, the hook of the rod was to lure the sheep back in when they felt like they were going astray. Y'all don't know where to get happy. Uh, he, he, he says that the end of the rod, the, the, the pointed aspect of the rod, drove away the enemy. The hook of the rod, when the sheep would drift away, the, sh the hook of the rod would catch the sheep and pull them back into the fold. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact of the matter is we're all sheep and sometimes we all go astray. But we can find comfort in knowing that even when we go astray because we belong to God, God won't let us get too far. God would not let us fall even though we stumble. God would not allow us to become engulfed and consumed in hurt because his perspective is, I need you in the fold. Now, I understand that there are some church folk who want you to think that they are perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. They don't ever cry. They don't ever have a bad day. Good morning, how are you doing today? Today's awesome. No, it ain't. It's not always awesome. Let's just be honest. Sometimes when people say good morning to you, your reply should be, what's so good about it? Get up in church at funerals and tell them, they were the same all the time, use a lie. <laughs> they had some bad days. And if I tell you what Miss Jeannie told me, that, that wasn't a good day. <laughs> Y'all ain't happy. She seen I was having a bad day and came up to me and told me what she told me, that, that wasn't a good day. <laughs> and so here we are today, family. Mm -hmm. trying to find peace in the midst of confusion how do we pick up pieces how do we try to move on when mama was such an intricate part of our family how, how, what, what comfort am I going to get out of this I believe there's a scripture that says lift up your head O ye gates and be ye lifted up uh, weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the moment let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house there are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you now there are many mansions in the father's house what does the house look like seems to suggest that God has the ability and the power to not only take care of us in the heavenlies, but to also take care of us here in the earth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, no one can tell you how to grieve. No one can tell you how long to grieve. Grieve as long as you must. But in the process of grieving, know that there is help that comes from above. There is help that comes from the divine that if only we would put our hands in his hands and continue to follow him, the same God that led us by still waters, that led us by the green pastures, that led us in this valley, he will lead us. Not just into the house of God, but he will lead us and keep us in his perfect and divine will. Now the question is, how do you expect me to walk with God through all of this? Because there are going to be some good days. There are going to be some bad days. But he closes by saying, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here is where I'm going to leave you, church. 
uh, when you're having one of those bad days from now on and, and, and until God brings you through this, know that when I have a bad day, God's got some grace and mercy I can lean on. When I'm having one of those days where I want to give up, where I want to quit, God has some goodness and some mercy. As a matter of fact, sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, when my goodness runs out, he says, if you just can hang on, if it be the Lord's will, I got some new mercies for you in the morning. So whenever you find yourself after the day, now that you understand, this comes along with the territory. Yeah. The problem that we have, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm done, is we're here for this family today. We might have to come back here for your family next week. It was mine in December. It's theirs in March. Yours might be the second weekend of February. June. And when those days come, you're not going to want to be bothered with people who just want to come around and ask questions. What happened? Did you die? What you mean, what happened? I don't need you coming to be nosy right about now. If you need me, call me. I, I, I needed you before it happened and called you. You didn't answer. Matter of fact, you were busy. Is there anything I can do now? Stay away. Because if the only thing you're going to come is to instigate. I don't need instigation right now. Because right now I'm in my flesh and you may get a flesh response. I'm hurting, my loved one has died, and I don't need your insecurity and immaturity trying to figure out what happened. But you died. She met her expiration date, and there was nothing I could do. Why? Because it comes with the territory. And family, we may not shout today like it was when it was good. But at the end of the day, we have a God we can count on. Mm, surely, goodness and mercy. And I, I tell you, I tell you, D, I tell you. There's going to come a day where you think everything is fine. And something's going to happen and remind you about mama. And the feelings you thought were already past and gone, they're going to surface again. But you got goodness and mercy. Look at me, Mr. Wheel. It's all right to be weak. Because when you're weak, that's when he's strong. <sighs> See, the Bible sets us up. It says God put Adam to sleep and took from Adam a real made woman, brought Adam to Eve and Eve to Adam. Adam looks at her and says, mm, woman. But it didn't tell us what he said when she no longer was there. It's all right to be weak. Comes along with the territory. But goodness 
and mercy. Family and friends, all of us are going to have to sit on this front row sooner or later. And when that day comes, we got to learn to lean on goodness and mercy. Because as long as we live in this life, trouble's going to come. So Paul comes to the realization and he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So I know mama's gone. We're going to miss auntie. We're going to miss granny. But she's got new glory now that you can't see. And it's the human thing to say, I want granny back. But according to God, God says, I've done something for you can't even do. I gave her some glory. And that glory can't be received here in the earth realm. You got to go to glory to get that glory. Amen, somebody. Come on, put your hands together and tell God thank you. Let us pray. Father, we come now in this moment to say thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being a God that is in control of everything. But now, God, we come lifting up this family. This family, God, that when they leave here, have to go home and face a new reality. But, God, we thank you that they can face this reality with hope because, God, you just reminded them that you are with them. And so, God, we pray that you will continue to remind them in the moments and in the days to come that you are with them. God, continue to remind them that your grace is more than sufficient for them. Reminding them, God, that your goodness and your mercy is right there with them every step of the way. And God, we thank you that you will be their leaning post, that you will be their strength, that you will be the one that will get them through when no one else is there to get them through. We thank you, O oh God, that as they call upon you, that you will answer them and that you will bring them the comfort and the peace that they need in the moments that they're going to need it. God, even when the visits stop, even when the calls have stopped and when the texts have stopped coming in, we thank you that you will remain there with them and that you're going to wrap your arms around them and that you're going to carry them the rest of the way. Now, God, we put them in your hands. And we pray, God, that only your perfect and submissive will will be done in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, as God has willed it, as God has seen it, so may it be on this day, and to God be the glory. At this time, let us stand for those who are not affiliated with the family, and to the direction of the preachers, let us receive and shake the hands of the family.
the one favor, Mr. Undertaker made. Won't you do me a favor, Mr. Undertaker made? Won't you do me a favor, Mr. Undertaker made? Won't you do me a favor, Mr. Undertaker made? And drive slow, drive slow. That's my mother that you're hauling to the grave. Do me a favor, Mr. Undertaker made. That you're hauling to the grave 